Hello, 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 what's good, my fellow peasants, how are you all doing? So this is some very exciting news. If you recall, just yesterday, I did the Square Enix financial report breakdown. And in that video, I spoke about how much Final Fantasy XV had cost and how I'd really like to get the marketing and development costs. Well, lo and behold, the news is now out. So this article appeared on Jewel Shotgun's Final Fantasy XV broke even with development costs on day one. Wow, now this is huge. For Tabata to say that it broke even, it means that F15 broke even on 5 million sales, which is how much sold in 24 hours. And from that, we can actually finally work out how much F15 cost. So for all of those who are interested in how much 15 cost, uh, let's work it out. Now this is kind of complex to work out because you can't just do the simple the base game uh, and times that by 5 million. It's a bit more complex than that. For, of course there wasn't just the base game, there was also the digital download edition and that came uh, the special day one digital download edition that came in at 69.99 and that was a very commonly purchased um, edition. Then we even look at things like the Ultimate Collector's Edition. And that bad boy was up to 130 quid. And then tallying in all of the other prices um, for all of the other different editions there were. There were Amazon Prime editions, there were various different store editions, one for game. Y you guys know how crazy it was, how many versions of the game there were. I mean the base game would still have been the most common purchase. So even if we just amortize that as an average at £55, and I would say that's a pretty healthy average, including that some people spending up to 130 quid, I think that would really bump up to about 55. No one was really getting it for less. And we times that by 5 million. We come up with 275 million. But the math again doesn't stop there. When a purchase is made directly through Square Enix or is digitally, da digitally downloaded straight from Square Enix, they do get a majority, I say a good strong majority of it, but in those instances where people bought it from say games or other outlets and retailers, and in those instances, again we have no way of knowing how many were sold through the retailers, so there is some speculative work in here, but on average, 27, only 27 of every $60 goes to the publisher themselves, so only to about half would have gone to Square Enix. The reason for that, the um, other 30-ish dollars has been worked out that about $15 goes to the retailer, so your GameStop, your Target, your other stores, about $7 goes to returns, so games that don't sell, and the platform, such as Xbox or PS4, so $7 goes there, and the remaining $4 of that 30 goes to distribution and cost. So going back to that big chunky figure of 275 million euros, how do we work out how much of that was done through a retailer and hence Square Enix got less money for it. Now there's, it's hard to do but this is the best way I can offer it for you. So if we go to this chart here, this is physical versus digital sales between 2009 and 2015. And look at it peasants, look at how the trend has gone. Digital has slowly crept up more and more since 2009, from 20% up to now in 2015, 56% of all game purchases were being digital. And we can imagine that that has continued to climb, perhaps it's now at 58%, perhaps it's around about 60%. But it's not actually true that if you buy it digitally from Square Enix, straight from Square Enix, that your full $60 if that's how much you spend, would all go to them because of course even with a digital sale they still need to pay the platform, so Xbox or PS4. And again that's a roughly on average $7 for every $60 purchase, so that's again about 10% that Square Enix aren't making. But I won't bother you with the rest of the figures because uh, there's so many more intricacies to consider, for example not every physical download is uh, physical purchases done through a retailer, you can buy physical copies from Square Enix and vice versa, not every digital download can be done just through Square Enix, you can also do it through Amazon Prime as well, there was a digital version you could get from there. But but a pretty hard and fast rule is to take those figures that 60% of the 5 million were digital. So that means that 3 million were digital of Final Fantasy 15 that sold and 2 million were physical. Of the digital, Square Enix still kept 90%, but of the physical, they took just over half. So we can say half for this math. And that means, ladies and gentlemen, in 24 hours of the 3 million digital versions that were sold, in total it pulled in 165 million, but only 148.5 million actually went into Square Enix's pocket. And of the physical, 
around about 110 million was generated through that and 55 million went into Square Enix pocket. But remember it's only $27 for every 60. So I'm going to round that up to 60 million. So of the 275 million that was spent on Final Fantasy 15 in the first 24 hours on those 5 mil copies, only 208.5 million, which is actually still quite a healthy number, went into Square Enix's pocket. That means that the figure Tab 2 is referring to when he says it broke even, broke even in 20 in the, after the 24 hour sales launch is roughly around the area, 208.5 million. I mean, we could give that some leeway, perhaps it'll be uh, lower as 190, perhaps it'll even be higher as 230. So we can give it some leeway. But if we just take 208.5, remember, being a dirty tea drinking, scone eating, God save our gracious queen Brit, <laughs> I've worked this all out in pounds. So if we convert that to dollars, about 258.89 million US dollars. So 260 mil dollars. And that, is a pretty reasonable but official price that I am putting on FF15 based on that bit of information from Tabata and where does that scale up against other games well we always knew this was going to be expensive and I said I expect it could beat seven so bringing up the list of most expensive video games ever to develop this page again FF7 including inflation from 1997 was at 216 million US dollars so Final Fantasy 15 beat it and it places FF15 possibly now at the third most expensive game ever. I think it solidly is and will going to be FF7, but it's not quite enough if I'm right that it's beating Grand Theft Auto 5 or Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. But again, I don't know what deals Square Enix have with retailers. I don't think we'll ever really find that out. And this is pretty speculative. There's a lot of room for movement in these numbers. Easily 10 to 20 percent. Um, movement either way and if that is the case then it is possible it is just possible that 15 could be Grand Theft Auto 5 and maybe even Call of Duty so it's not impossible that Final Fantasy 15 could be the most expensive game ever made wow that would be crazy um, yeah whether it will take down that rank one or two spot we'll have to see hopefully we will get some more official figures but I definitely think based on this figures alone uh, and that statement alone that we can solidly place it at number three dethroning FF7 oh god <laughs> I'm so sorry if that was a boring little section there uh, I just really wanted to work out the math uh, but yeah just going back to the arc we're just going back to this news overall this is excellent news it broke even in 24 hours from those 5 million sales alone that means that everything from here on out is straight profit for Square Enix and that's fantastic news so the extra 1 million units that shipped that was all green money that was all good money and we know that 15 is looking like it could even reach up to about 10 million and if they do reach that uh, and they do continue to spell another 4 million in 2017 of course the price of 15 will lower significantly through that period I mean you can already get it down for as low as about 32 pounds I mean yeah that figures pretty accurate I just looked at Square Enix uh, you can even do it straight from them the digital edition was 59.99 and that's now down to 39.99 so going away I've calculated how much profit could they make with the other 5 million, the 5 million that is now in the green. I've done the exact same math, taken the same factors into account, digital versus um, physical, retailer versus straight from square. I've done all that just with a much lower price tag instead of a 55 pound average, if we take just a 30 pound average on that. Square Enix are really shaping up to make a 130 million pound profit from 15. And of course it is, if they broke even at only halfway through their goal, and they still and they do manage to sell the other five million. That's phenomenal. That's a hell of a lot of profits. So Square Enix have really done well for there. So when Tabata came out and said that the the ten million was their goal, and people said, oh. <laughs> 15 is going to flop, Final Fantasy is going to flop, it's going to make a loss. Um, and then Tabata came out later and he clarified, no, we don't actually need 10 million. That was a personal. That was just a personal goal, a personal aim. He wasn't lying, guys. This is the proof of it. They only needed 5 million and that 130 million prof pound profit, that's 161.63 million US dollars. Holy hell, that is a good number. And let's put that into context against the article we saw yesterday, which was Square Enix's yearly uh, revenue report. And they said that their revenue was at 1.7 billion, up from 1.3 billion. But they also said that profit came in at 151 million dollars up from 120 million and that's the entire company 
Not even just the gaming division with its Tomb Raider and all of its other games included. That's the entire company. That means that Final Fantasy XV on its own, if it continues to sell 10 million units, it could on its very own exceed the entire profit margin that Square Enix were able to make in 2016 on its very own. That is an incredible mind-boggling possibilities but this is what people need to realize is a wholly believable one people really don't realize just how well 15 has done i mean really i don't think people have actually come to terms and come to grips with just how well this product has got done again fastest selling product on the ps4 breaking digital download records best selling final fantasy ever made and i know that there are going to be people who are going to now complain well this is terrible news why should i be happy about this square enix they've made loads of money on an incomplete product that i hated <laughs> i know that some people don't like final fantasy 15 but i'm just interpreting the statistics here don't shoot the messenger you can have whatever opinion you want but you know i think even if you didn't like 15 you should still be happy to hear about you know, square enix's financial success I know. Do you want a good Final Fantasy VII remake? Do you want a uh, good Kingdom Hearts games? You know, I, I don't see why some people, when they don't like a specific game, they kind of had this mindset of I want the company to fucking fail. I want to deliver my financial vengeance on them. I mean, come on, guys. Square Enix have brought out some incredible games. They are a, a, they are a brilliant, brilliant developer. I don't actually have any gripes with them. And you know, for all of you motherfuckers who said that you know Square Enix Square died back when it was SquareSoft, man, get the fuck over it. SquareSoft were the ones who started developing 10-2, for fuck's sake. So don't give me that shit. People who say that SquareSoft would never have done sequels or prequels, no, they started 10 2. They started that J Poppy YRP imposition, let's go girls sequel. They started that. So don't give me this SquareSoft shit. Square Enix are a good developer, and I'm glad to see these results. It, it makes me feel good inside. Now, I'm not saying that they haven't done some shady shit and they haven't pulled some dodgy shit in the past of course they have but everyone's done it even squaresoft did it i mean just get over it at this point let's let's hope that square enix do well and i really think they deserve it so many people did pour their heart and soul into 15 that game has a hell of a lot of soul and when i see how hard the team have worked and i see how hard tabitha worked and you know the, those reports that he was on three hours sleep average you know, people pour their hearts into this and we have seen with Square Enix, they do give their directors and their teams a lot of creative independence. So not a lot of this is their work. And I really don't think Square Enix are this big corporate monster that some people really like to paint them out to be. But, you know, we all have our opinion on that one. Let me know what you think of Square Enix in the comment section below. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna open the floodgates. But for those people saying, you know, yeah, it's an unfinished product. Well, no, we are getting those free cutscenes. But the other point is the DLC. And this is where I'll round off with the end of this article because this is hugely hugely relevant to you know the rest of the profits there's still the dlc we're not even including those yet it's going to be 14.99 for the season pass for the six episodes and square enix they're inevitably going to be making a huge amount of profit on the dlc okay guys i'm only telling the figures for the game i'm not even including the dlc that 160 mil profit that they could be making on just the game factor the dlc in oh my god that could actually get up to 200 mil apparently only about 49 percent of people buy dlc statistically so yeah if we include whatever profit they're going to be making on the back end of that oh god damn uh, their profit margin for 15 alone in 2017 could even be as high as 200 million us dollars and that is not a figure that square enix have seen in a long long time so their, their share price could really see quite a spike uh, if the, if that money does come through like that and if enough people buy the dlc i mean it might not necessarily make profit like 15 has had because there's going to be some huge development costs again in working on the dlc i've said they need to bring back the voice actors the animators uh, pretty much the world designers uh, almost everything and i said that a couple of weeks ago i said for all intents and purposes, this game is still in development. And that the end of this article confirmed nearly just that. 70% of its staff are still at work on free and paid additional content. On free and paid. 70% of the staff are still on it. That is mad. That is absolutely crazy. Typically with DLC, you only usually have around about a seventh of that. About 10% of the uh, team still working on the game. And the fact that 15 had a team of 300 means around 210 us people are still working on the game. While 90 have been moved off to other areas within Business Division 2. 
That is a level of post-game commitment that very few games have ever had. And this is something to also get really excited about. The fact they've still got that many people on. There is no doubt that within there, there must still be designers, artists, audio engineers, animators, programmers, testers, you name it. For them to keep on a team of that size? Oh, good googly moogly, there must be a hell of a lot happening in the DLC. And that's the kind of team we need to get a Dark World DLC. <laughs> I think that would be really hopeful thinking but what this does show is that the DLC is not going to be some small derpy little cutscene or event these are going to be big these are going to be the kind of DLCs where you need to keep 70% of the production team still in play and you need to think of how big that is that is major I am super excited about that I really am. So there it is, guys. That's it on the table. What do you think? Are you excited to hear that? Uh, what do you think about my ballpark figure for how much 15 cost? How would you have worked it out? And again, let me know how you feel about Square Enix making a shite load. A shitey, shitey, shite load of money for Final Fantasy 15. Does it make you happy? How do you feel about Square Enix? Let me know in the comment section below. Until the next video. Kubo!